Welcome to another video. Let's drift away from the super hard math problems to something fun for an Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 student. And this is a problem. Let m and n be positive integers and let the sum of the square root of m and the square root of n be another integer. We need to prove that the square root of m and the square root of n are integers themselves. Now if you pay attention to what the question looks like, well you have two positive integers and then you take their square roots and add the square roots together and you get another integer, you want to prove that each of those square roots must in themselves be integers. That sounds like common sense, right? Well, prove it. Remember that in math, the hardest thing is to prove that what you're saying is right. You got to know all the details surrounding it. And that's what we're going to do in this video. It's going to be fun. Let's get into the video. So we know that M could be any positive integer, n could be any positive integer, and this sum could be any positive integer, which we don't know. So we're just going to choose k to be the sum. So we're going to say, proof. Let m, the square root of m, plus the square root of n be equal to some integer k. First thing we're going to do, that's the statement of this is an integer. Now, let's try to find one of them by solving basic algebra, okay? Algebra 1, let's subtract n from both sides. Will be equal to k minus the square root of n, right? Subtract this from both sides. Now, typically when you want to solve a square root equation, you square both sides. So if we square both sides, we're going to end up with, will be equal to k minus square root of n, squared. If we square this, we know our answer is going to be k squared minus 2k square root of n plus n. Nice. Okay, so this is what we have. Now, if you notice, the only radical that we have showing up, because that's the concern, is this guy. So we can solve for the square root of n by, let's say, let's move this to this side. Ta-da-da! The square root of n is a rational number. Okay, so here we're going to have, this is a rational number. So we can say, this implies that the square root of n is rational. The fact that we could write it this way, an integer divided by an integer, it means it is rational. What do we know about rational numbers? Well, let's assume we don't know so much, but we really still don't know what the square root of n is. We just know that it's rational. So what we're going to say is, let x be the square root of n, then we're going to find what x is. Okay? So we're going to say, um, let x be equal to the square root of n. Then if I square both sides, again, just to get rid of the radical, I know that x squared will be equal to n. Ah, I can pull n. Remember, n is an integer, so I can pull n to the left and say x squared minus n equals zero. If this is an integer, then what I have is a polynomial. This is a quadratic. Do I know how to solve quadratic equations like this? Yes. But let's say I don't know how to solve quadratic equations. I just want to know what's going on with this guy or what x could be. Now we have to solve for x. In solving for x, let's introduce the rational root theorem. What does it say? It says, if you have a polynomial that the leading coefficient is by, let's say, by the rational root theorem. N 
anything that's going to be rational that is the root of this equation. By the way, one of the solutions to this polynomial equation is this. We already said it. x equals square root of n is a solution to this polynomial. So, and according to the rational root theorem, if you have any rational solution, it must follow this rule. By the rational root theorem, any rational root x must be such that um, is such that x is equal to plus or minus p over q. What is p? p is an integer that divides n. What is q? q is an integer that divides this number here. So in this case, p must divide n and q must divide 1 because the leading coefficient is 1. Okay, where p divides n and q divides 1. But we know that the only number that divides is 1. And p is an integer that divides n. We don't care what p is, but we know that p is an integer by the rational root theorem. p is an integer, q is an integer. p divides n, q divides 1. So when you write any answer, your answer is going to be plus or minus p over 1. Remember, p is an integer according to the rational root theorem. That's how, that's how we choose it. So if we had x squared minus 7 equals 0, then the only values you can have here are all integers that divide 7. There must be 1 and 7. And the only integers that divide 1 are 1 and 1. Okay, so only 1 is the option here. So you, can, you see that, therefore, x is equal to plus or minus p over 1, which is equal to p, which is an integer. We have just shown that x, which is equal to the square root of n, is an integer. Thus, equal square root of n is an integer. So we're going to say since, since square root of n is an integer, square root of m equals k minus square root of n is also an integer. Therefore, square root of m and square root of n are integers. This is really fun. It just brings you into some basic algebra reasoning. And thanks to my professor from New York that sent me a bunch of these types of questions a long time ago. And occasionally when I try to relax, I just go over them and they're beautiful. Never stop learning because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.